It's too late to have Arrow now. It's like, she, she, she's tired. I swear I'm just as entertaining. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for All Hell Breaks Loose Part 1. Now, this is an episode that I initially remember liking a lot more. And it's because I remember the ending. Oh, she did appear. Arrow, up, up, come up. Oh. So initially I remember this episode for liking the ending. When this was still a show that I watched, as it came out, as I have done essentially for almost the entirety of the show, when Sam got stabbed in the, in the back at the end of this episode, and we had to wait an entire week to see what happened afterwards. That was mind boggling. The fact that he gets super stabbed in the back and Dean just goes, Sam, and that's how the episode ends. It was a great pre-season finale on top of the what is and what never should be. Having that episode, seeing that Dean sacrificed the happy life so he could go back to his life with his brother, then just to have that be taken away from him immediately almost afterwards, really compounded the final five minutes of this episode, the final 10 minutes I would say, because the rest of it's kinda dry. The episode starts off interestingly enough with Sam just poof, disappearing at this random in the middle of nowhere pie and burger shop. We see Sam get taken to Border Town. This is a set that's in Pitt Meadows. I've actually got to work there several times. This actually was a show that was produced back in the late 80s, early 90s. It only went for about two, I don't even think three years, but the town has been used by different film productions ever since. Some of the buildings are actually real. Some of them are just face facades, but there's a lot that are actually accessible. There's not much in some of them. There's just a big nothing in some of them, and some are literally just faces, just straight up faces, but those are like the thin in between ones. There's one where Sam is like knocking on a window in front of him and looking in, there's nothing in that one. However, because of the lack of service or any sort of upkeep to any of these buildings, a few of them, particularly the barn, which I know that Supernatural is shot in, is inaccessible, you can't go in there. Stuff has fallen down, it's just structurally unsafe. We now see the demon's plan on full display. We see a bunch of the chosen children there, including some that Sam and Dean have come across before, some they have not. We get the gist that this is the battleground and nothing happens for a while. Sure, the girl ends up dead to kind of further cement that they need to fight each other, but even then, it's proven that it's actually not the demon that killed this girl, it's Amy. Think it's Amy. She turns out to be this total sadistic person actually in the end after she terribly kills Andy. Andy's death sucks in this episode. However, it's after Andy dies and Sam comes in and straight up in like less than two minutes, yeah, it's you, it's clearly you. That's when the episode turns around. All this knowledge that Sam has about what's going on, they don't believe him and then eventually they're like, yeah, you're right. All the conflict that happens between the army guy and Sam at the end just makes no sense considering everything that Sam has previously stated. <laughs> Obviously tensions are high, but it still doesn't make sense in terms of the logic of the episode. Dean goes to Bobby to get some help. Ash has some sort of news, which I honestly can never remember what it is that Ash wanted to tell Dean. Don't remind me in the comments, please. I actually want to see if they talk about it. If I go through all of season three and they don't ever explain, I think actually they do. They might, I don't know, we'll see. But I, I want to see if I can figure it out for myself. I'll eventually ask if I don't know. While that is an interesting moment where they come to the roadhouse and it's burnt down, we find out that Ash is Ash. It, again, at the time it added a, ooh, to it. Rewatching it this time, the episode really doesn't start until the last 10 minutes. And that's when stuff starts to get interesting. We have cool conflicts, we see the army guy come up straight up behind Amy and <laughs> snap her neck. And then they start to fight each other. And it's the dumbest fight because really if he's as strong as he says he is and he punches Sam so hard that he marvel flies over a fence and lands and Sam gets up from that. It's like, no, your whole face should be destroyed. He then goes up to him, one punches him in the shoulder and completely dislocates his shoulder. Obviously this is a show of make-believe, but you gotta take a little bit of serious salt with this narrative. And seeing Sam fly like all Kamehameha and then land and be like, yeah, sure, come at me, bro. I like every other part of the fight after that 
punch though, because like I said, when he punches him in the shoulder, and Sam's like, oh, fudge. Again, and we see Sam kind of had that little moment of maybe, maybe I should kill him. He's like, no, I'm not gonna do the demon's plan. And then they, they are just about, just about to reunite. The brothers are right about to reunite and he comes up behind him and stabs him in the back. Again, that part is great. The last five minutes of this episode are pretty much almost exceptional. The last 10 minutes of this episode are pretty good. Everything before it is boring. It's necessary storytelling, of course. It's necessary to be there, but it's boring. It's kind of funny because that's exactly what happened with Salvation in season one. The episode before the season finale is kind of lacking. Not in a bad way, but it's not the ooh. So really, I'm judging this episode in the last 10 minutes. I'm judging it on that because the other stuff is just fluff. It's not bad, again, but it's not as ooh as I thought it would be, considering just how great this season's been so far. So in the end, I'm gonna give All Hell Breaks Loose part one a four out of seven. So anyways, I asked you guys last time to give me your comments about part one. I know some of you have probably given me part two, and if you have, I'm gonna hold those off until part two. But for the ones who did talk about part one, Let's see what you guys have to say. All Hell Breaks Loose Part 1. These two episodes are very disjointed and don't have good synergy when viewed as a continuation. After rewatching the episode, I noticed right off the bat the abandoned town they are in. It, it was the same one that they used in Season 6 of Frontierland. Like I said, they've actually used Border Town quite a few times. They've used it in Season 1. They've used it, obviously, in Season 2. They've used it in other times. If not the town itself, they've used the surrounding like little area. There is like a little bit of a a trail to a farmhouse past the town. So yeah, that this town has been used over and over and over again. A lot of Vancouver film shows use this town. As an Easter egg, Andy actually called it Frontierland. All of the other psychic kids were annoyed except for Andy. All the other psychic kids were annoying except for Andy. Jake was especially annoying. Ava, I can't believe I called her something else this whole time. Ava, wow. Ava's whiny ass acting was over the top and her flip-flopping came too fast considering she didn't have um, much on-screen time character building. I'll admit that, yeah. She kind of flip-flops really quickly. There's a lot of flip-flopping, really like quick development of uh, villains in these next two episodes. The lesbian's comment about not being able to touch her girlfriend is interesting given that this, uh, given the year this was released, it makes me wonder if this was a cultural comment commentary at the time. Andy also comments about injecting gay porn into his co-worker's mind. It really shows how much stuff has aged. Yes, I actually forgot to make a mention about that, but yes, that joke has aged. I've always acknowledged this woman, even though she's barely in the episode, as a rogue, like from X-Men in terms of what her ability is. It's, it's pretty horrible. Part one of the finale is solid. We got to know more about Yellow Eye's plan and we knew more about Mary, which gets explained in season four, which I've always enjoyed that they kind of held that off while focusing on Dean's year of life left in season three. The actor, <clears throat> the actor who plays Yellow Eye upon rewatching is great and charismatic and it sucks to know that he's going to be gone by the end. And they did your boy Ash dirty. They killed him off screen. I get that he wasn't an important character, but he was there to do fun bits and give the brothers information. Actually, never mind. It would have been too easy for the brothers to just go to Ash for info all the time about stuff, I guess, yeah, later on in the show. Andy was my favorite psychic character, but it makes sense that he died because he wasn't really a fighter. And when Sam dies, I laughed a bit. A death on Supernatural is really non-existent and kind of makes it hard to rewatch earlier seasons because you always know they're going to come back whenever it makes sense or not looking at you catch yes i understand that this criticism is going to come up a few times from you guys but i still remember watching this episode live and then waiting that whole week going my god i can't believe sam is dead and so i think it's that reason why i enjoy this part of the episode so much is because i can still remember that visceral feeling it has not been clouded by the fact that the brothers have died and come back a bajillion times because I can still hold on to this memory. All Hell Breaks Loose Part 1 is alright. Not one of my favorites, but still appreciate the plot twist with Ava. Still don't know why I called her all these other words. I, I don't know how I couldn't remember Ava. We lose both Ash and Andy in this episode, which is unfortunate. Forget how little we saw of Ash. Azazel was a solid threat for his time, but to no fault of this episode's really... Everything is just a bit underwhelming and laughable, considering the Winchesters will go up against God, death, the apocalypse, etc. 
I'll admit that if I watched this episode when it came out and saw Sam die, I would be on the edge of my seat for part two, which is what I was on. However, it didn't age well knowing that Sam and De Dean's death slash resurrection count is over a hundred by now. A dying Winchester is merely an inconvenience more than a plot altering occurrence, which just shows you how much the series has changed. Compared to how much I love seeing the entirety of season 3 dedicated to the weight of Dean's sacrifice in the season 2 finale. That point is actually probably why season 3 is my favorite one. Now if one of the boys dies, it's probably just because they need to meet Rowena for dinner in hell or check out a book from Death Library. Yeah, they have admittedly brought the boys back a lot. When Death in what, season 13 or 14 said, yeah, you're not getting any more retries. So I thought, yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> Love having Arrow join you for your videos with the quality and the acting and the story of what is and what should never be. I'm still going to give it a 7, give me a Dean-centric episode, and I'm a happy woman. So no surprise that All Hell Breaks Loose is not one of my favorite episodes, although it does have a killer ending. I will read the next part of your comment when I do All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2. Anyways, thank you guys again for those comments. Part 2 is next. So get ready, because... I'm blasting these out. And I'm also gonna have a little bit of an announcement at the end of All Hell Breaks Loose Part 2. Something that I actually probably should have started doing a little while ago. Doesn't really add many more video ideas, but I'm actually excited to try it, especially with the supernatural thing. All I'll say is it involves lists. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.